Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Mark Vines Show. This is Mark Vines, and I'm glad you're with me today because, folks, we've got a lot of work to do between now and November. As you know, this country is under attack, and we've got to stand up, and we've got to educate ourselves, and we've got to be motivated more now than ever. So let's just get right into it today. We're going to talk about Roger Stone. So you may be upset. You may be one of those people that says, oh my gosh, this is so unprecedented. Here we go again. Uh, Trump is abusing his power. He's abusing the, the powers of the presidency. We need to go in and prevent president the president from doing this. And um, you may be buying into that whole narrative because that, that is the narrative that's being presented by the media today. And well, let me just talk about it, this for a little bit today. <clears throat> because what they mean when they say that they want to limit the presidential powers for pardon and commutations, they mean they want to limit this president's powers for pardons and commutations because they really don't want to limit that. <clears throat> they want to be able to limit um, this president, but they want people to receive commutations and pardons when uh, their party is, is in town. Let's be honest with that. Now, if you doubt me, I just want to run through some of the statistics on this because you may not be aware. You know, knowledge is power, folks, and I encourage you to get out and educate yourself on this stuff because, you know, I have mentioned before that I'm just astounded that outside of the Washington, D.C. area, which is where I live, how little people know about what goes on in this city and how much people don't realize about their own history in this country. And right now there is a movement afoot to limit your knowledge on the past and for you not to understand what has happened. And that way they can control the thoughts that you have. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, if you ask yourself why we have all these statues and libraries and, and monuments and things, you know, they're there to serve as a reminder of our past. That's why I don't particularly support taking down all of these statues that we have, the good or the bad. I mean, a lot of these people I, I don't care for. I mean, Robert E. Lee, Jeb Stewart, all these Southerners that uh, seceded from the Union. I'm not big fans of these people. But you know what these things do? You know what these statues do? It reminds us of what happened in the United States. And it serves as a reminder of where we could go and what can happen in the future if we are not careful. So if you re erase history, if you take all this history away, then what happens? You relive that history and have to learn it all over again. That's why in Europe, if you ever go to Eastern Europe, I've, I've been there, they still have the death camps from the Second World War. And the reason why they have them is because the Jews believe that you should never forget. Never forget that these things happen. Never again, never forget. That's the tagline that they have over in Eastern Europe. So not a real good idea to get rid of all the history here in the United States as well. Now, but back to the original topic, and that is that Democrats love these powers when their person is in town, but they hate these powers when Republicans are in town. Well, let's just kind of look at some numbers, why don't we? So I went in and I looked up uh, <clears throat> presidential commutations and just, you know, you can look at a lot of presidents. You can go back in time and look at what all of them did. But let's just take the recent history, right? Because you know, unfortunately, most Americans feel that if it didn't happen five or six years ago, <clears throat> it didn't happen at all. So if I start talking about Theodore Roosevelt or if I talk about Andrew Jackson or go back that far, most Americans don't even know who these people are. You realize that, right? Don't even know who they are. So to many of the people that are out on the streets protesting today, history started when Barack Obama took office. Well, why don't we take a look at Barack Obama? Why don't we do that? I think we will. So now, first of all, I want to talk about the difference between a pardon and a commutation, commuting a sentence and pardoning someone, because apparently there's some confusion out there. Now, if I pardon you, if I'm the president and I pardon you, that means that it's erased, meaning you did not commit that crime. If I commute your sentence, what that means is you are still convicted of that crime. You just aren't doing the jail time. So what that means is that Roger Stone is still a convicted felon, right? Now, the media is not telling you that, but it's the truth. He is still a convicted felon. He just isn't doing the jail time. 
now everybody's up in arms about that. You know, Ro- Roger Stone is this evil character. And, uh, you know, this this is horrible, uh, th- this breach of justice. And, you know, Trump should be thrown out of office. And in fact, there are some Democrats that are talking about throwing, uh, going out and impeaching him again over this, saying that he abused his power. Well, actually, he didn't. The president does have that power. And when you think that uh, this is a, a breach of justice, I'm just going to throw a few things at you. Okay, A, he is a convicted felon. B, he's an old man. And if he is sent to prison, it's probably a death sentence for him for the number of years that he was looking at his condition and COVID-19 floating around the prisons. And you think, well, too bad. He should have thought about that before he committed the crime. Well, are you aware, um, according to the Los Angeles Times here recently this week, there's an article that states the state of California is throwing 8,000 prisoners out of uh, their prison system because of COVID-19. Now, I don't see people all up in arms about that, but (laughs) that's a fact. So, uh, okay for Roger Stone because he's this hardened felon that needs to be put in prison, but we have 8,000 prisoners out in California that are being released. Now, I'm going to, when we talk about somebody like Roger Stone being a hardened felon, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to be honest. I'm going to ask you a question. What did Roger Stone do? Now, when I ask that question, if I went out on the streets here, even in Washington, D.C., where more people are connected to politics than anywhere else in the country, do you think I can find many people that can intelligently articulate to me what exactly Roger Stone did? I don't think I can. And I bet if you're honest, most of you listening to me right now probably don't know exactly why he was convicted in the first place, right? Well, <clears throat> he was convicted over lying to Congress. Now, I just want you to think about that for a minute. So people like Adam Schiff, who've been lying for years, basically every time they talk, they're lying. I mean, just go back and look at the video footage of him giving speeches um, during, the, during the impeachment hearings, and nearly everything that came out of the man's mouth was a lie. Now, imagine that you're being sent to prison because you're being accused of lying to him. Just astounding. Now, what was all what was going on was the accusation was that Roger Stone had uh, uh, contact with Assange. You remember from WikiLeaks, and that Roger Stone was trying to get um, information about Hillary Clinton and Podesta and the uh, hacking of the DNC servers um, and, and that information, and wanted to release that for being you know damaging information for. Hillary Clinton. Now, the information ended up being released anyway. I mean, it was going to be released whether Roger Stone got it or not, but he was accused of, you know, working back channels and trying to get this information, getting it out early in order to damage uh, Hillary Clinton. Now, uh, I do want to remind you, too, that the no one doubts that the, the hacks that did occur on the DNC servers, but the DNC would not allow the FBI to come in and do an investigation. They, they hired their own company to do their own investigation. So we don't, we will really never know what happened, the extent and the whole background. But that's in essence what happened was he was in contact, he being Roger Stone, in contact with Julian Assange trying to get information on Hillary Clinton, which is really not even uncommon in Washington. Everybody's trying to get what they call oppo or opposition research on the opposite party. But he was called in. um, He was asked questions by Congress. He lied uh, to Congress, uh, was convicted of that, and then um, sentenced. And then, you know, the rest of the story that Trump ended up commuting his sentence. But he's still that convicted felon. Now, um, just some numbers for you here real quick, because I've heard how this is like a trend with, with Trump. So Barack Obama, it turns out, commuted 1,745 or 1,700 roughly uh, sentences in his time in office. 1,715. Now, um, when you go down, and I'm getting this from the justice.gov org, when you go down and you look at Trump, do you have any idea how many people he has commuted since he's been in office? Ten. So Barack Obama, 1,700. And Donald Trump, 10, okay? Just let that sink in for a second the next time you watch the news and you hear about how 
just off the charts and off the rails that uh, Donald Trump has become. Ten people. And by the way, there were competitions. They were not pardons. So again, that means that these people are still convicted of whatever crime it was that they were accused of and sentenced to. Now, I want to give you one of those 1,700 examples of Barack Obama. One. And I want to talk about this case, and I want to ask you how much outrage there was over this commutation. Okay. I want you to ask yourself, were we burning down buildings, tearing down statues, and talking about what an injustice all of this was? And I, the reason why I use this particular example that I'm going to use is I have a person that I know, uh, loosely a friend, it's someone that I've worked with in the past, that is online, as we speak, just having a meltdown over Donald Trump and, and the fact that Donald Trump is not more aggressive with these bounties that are being put on the heads of sold, you know, U.S. soldiers, as if this is something new. Um, this person was not prior military, but he's got a relative that's in the military, uh, in the Army, as a matter of fact, and apparently that relationship is what's causing him to have a meltdown right now, that he's just so enraged that the Russians would do such a thing. Um, I do have a military background, and I just assume that every enemy we have <laughs> has a bounty on our heads. I just assume that going in. These people are, are not our friends. This is not new. I don't know that there's any special action any president has to take. It's just assumed that that's the way it's going to be. But anyway, this friend of mine is having an absolute meltdown and is on social media, and in fact, on professional forums that I'm a part of, uh, just talking about what a, what a rodent Donald Trump is and how he should be doing this and that. I mean, you could be talking about anything. You could be talking about work. And then his comeback will be, well, Donald Trump is horrible and I want to hear him condemn Putin for this, that, and the other thing. And I just, I, in fact, I'm, I'm concerned for his health and his safety. I really, Because I'm, I'm afraid he's going to have a stroke and, and I'm afraid that at some point blood is just going to start spurting from his eyes. Now, so it's a, it's a health concern of mine. Now, what I did not hear my friend do was got all upset over the person I'm going to talk about. And this is someone that President Barack Obama commuted years ago when he was in office. And this person is Chelsea Manning. Maybe you've heard of Chelsea Manning. Well, a little bit of background, and I'm going to uh, be reading from Wikipedia here just to, to give you some of the background on Chelsea Manning. Now, Chelsea Manning was actually Bradley Manning, but since childhood, he felt that he had a female identity and so ended up having a sex change operation and became Chelsea Manning. And that's probably where you know uh, her, and I'll refer to her from here on out. Uh, that's, that's probably how you know Chelsea Manning. Okay, so let me just bear with me here as I read some of this, and then we'll break it down. Chelsea Elizabeth Manning, born Bradley Edward Manning in 1987, is an American activist and whistleblower. Now, just, just listen to how, as if I question Wikipedia, he's characterized, or she is characterized, as an American activist and whistleblower. Now, just listen to that. She is a former United States Army soldier who was convicted by court-martial in July 2013 of violations of the Espionage Act and other offenses after disclosing to WikiLeaks, well, that sounds like what Roger Stone did, Nearly, now listen to this, 750,000, 750,000 classified or unclassified but sensitive military and diplomatic documents. She was imprisoned from 2010 to 2017 when her sentence was commuted. Now, who did that? Barack Obama did that. A trans woman, Manning stated in 2013 she had a female gender, gender identity since childhood and wanted to be known as Chelsea Manning. She also expressed a desire to, to begin hormone replacement therapy. Okay. So, um, assigned in 2009 to an army unit in Iraq as an intelligence analyst, Manny had access to classified databases. In early 2010, she leaked classified information to WikiLeaks. Did you hear that? Leaked classified information to WikiLeaks. The difference is Roger Stone was trying to get information from WikiLeaks, Manning was providing the information. In early 2010, she leaked classified information to WikiLeaks and, and confided to Adrian Lamo, an online acquaintance, 
Rommel indirectly informed the Army's criminal, criminal, criminal Investigative Command, and Manning was arrested in May that same year. The material included videos of the July 12, 2007 Baghdad airstrike and the 2009 Granai airstrike in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. 251,287 U.S. diplomatic cables and 482,832 Army reports that came to be known as the Iraq War Logs and Afghan War Diary. The material was published by WikiLeaks. Let me say that again. The material was published by WikiLeaks and its media partners between 2010 and uh, April 2010 and April of 2011. So that's one year. Manning was charged with 22 offenses, which included aiding the enemy, enemy, which was the most serious charge and could have resulted in a death sentence. Okay, And I won't read the rest of it. Um, then it talks about where she was uh, imprisoned and then uh, later how she was transferred to Leavenworth because she was at Quantico, Virginia, and then Leavenworth. And there was concern. There was human rights activists that were concerned about the isolation, you know, being alone in the cell. Um, and then... Of course, she was the, the sentence was commuted, and then um, she was up for all sorts of um, freedom awards from different groups around the world. Uh, there was a group that nominated her for a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, the gay transgender community has uh, nominated her for all sorts of prizes or given her prizes, and she even had an unsuccessful bid for um, Congress in in Maryland. Ended up losing that, but on and on and on. So. Uh, later um, in WikiLeaks, if you read, you see that um, she is celebrated as an outspoken advocate, that she is the hero and is an advocate um, talking about how you have to do the moral thing and correct wrongs where you see wrongs. Okay, that's, that's how she was portrayed. That's how she was portrayed by the media. And you don't hear anyone, to include my friend who's having a meltdown online, talk about how all of this information was given to our enemies and by the way, some of that information did include troop movements, troop placements, strengths, so on and so forth. You know, tactical and strategic military information that was being used against our own troops. I have never seen one post from my friend talking about how horrible this was. Not seen one post on it. But yet Donald Trump and Roger Stone are the enemy of the people. The fact is, Roger Stone didn't release any information that meant anything to anyone, did not change the course of the election, and as I said at the beginning of this podcast, I don't think that most of you could articulate to me what it was that he did in the first place. Now, Chelsea Manning is just one of 1,700 commutations that I could go through. Now, I happen to know that some of those include hardened criminals, people who are enemies of the United States, and terrorists. But yet the media did not go blind complaining about this. So the point here is you have to become educated on what is going on out there today. And when you see the media telling you that this is unprecedented, it's never happened before, and it's an abuse of power, uh, when you see that, don't just take that blindly. Do your research, understand what is going on, and understand that these people, and I'm going to say this right now, these people hate America. They are they are our enemies. They are aiding and abetting uh, our enemies who want to take us out. And they are trying to move you into a far left socialist or even Marxist direction. And if we are not careful, folks, if we are not careful, it will happen. And just take a look at the television today, look at the news, see the destruction that's going on. And that is just a taste of what is going to happen to us if these people ever, God forbid, get back into power. You just remember that. And uh, when so on November 3rd, on that day, I don't care what you're doing, you need to get out and vote. You need to get everybody that you know up to vote. You got to get grandma up. You got to get everybody up and make sure they vote. And we maintain power after November because... This is a direction that you just don't want to go down. It just isn't. So with that, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please give me a like, give me a follow. Follow Mark Vines on Facebook. Uh, tell all of your friends about this program. Let's sp spread the word. We've got to get motivated to uh, keep our values, our direction, 
uh, the vision of this country and the vision of freedom. Guys, I really enjoyed talking with you. I'm glad I could be with you today, and I will see you next time. This is Mark Vines, and I'm out.